Hi everybody, let's go to Mexico City. Hey, what's up, people? Welcome to this channel, Mi Pasión México. It's a pleasure to be with you in this first video in English. So, if my English is so bad, try to understand me, please. I will get better. Really, I hope so. This channel was created for showing you my beautiful country. So, I will try to upload more videos in English. If you want, you can subscribe to this amazing channel for visit with me more places in Mexico. Now we are in Mexico City, a city with legends, modernity, tradition, culture, fun, but above all a lot, a lot of history. This big city has many interesting places that we will visit in other videos, but in this first video here I want to invite you to my home, my refuge of knowledge, my alma mater, the National Autonomous University of Mexico. I love this institution, but this isn't the reason I bring you here. The real reason is because this campus is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, a very important place in the history of Mexico. It's complicated to imagine the modern history of Mexico without this university and their contribution. This is because it's the biggest educational institution in the country, training professionals every year. The contribution of this university are in research, science and culture. It's uh, the beginning of important social movement has been headquartered of the most important sport events in the world. In their classroom, have studied important personalities of Mexico and world. And if this is not enough, the UNAM give to Mexico one of the 34 World Heritage Places. The foundation of this institution happens on May 26 of 1910, with the name National University of Mexico. This, thanks to the continuous effort to Justo Sierra, Minister of Education at that moment. This campus was built to the south of Mexico City in a particular area. This because all this area was covered for a volcanic stone. This happened for an eruption 2000 years ago by a volcano called Shidley, near to Mexico City. In 2007, this campus was declared World Heritage Site by UNESCO. Only five universities around the world have this title, the University of Virginia in the United States, Central University of Venezuela in Venezuela, University of Alcalá in Spain, University of Coimbra in Portugal, and this one, the National Autonomous University of Mexico in Mexico. The campus constitutes a unique example of 20th century modernism integrating urbanism, architecture, engineering, landscape design, and fine arts with reference to local tradition, especially to Mexico's pre-Hispanic past. The ensemble embodies social and cultural values of universal significance and is one of the most significant icons of modernity in Latin America. The Central University City Campus of UNAM bears testimony of the modernization and post-revolutionary Mexico in the framework of universal ideas and values related to access to education, improvement of a quality of life. Integral intellectually and physical education and integration between urbanism, architecture and fine arts. It is a collective work where more than 60 architects, engineers and artists work together to create the spaces and facility app to contribute to the progress of humankind through education. This was part of the UNESCO release. This is the first mural we will appreciate. It. This mural is on the south facade of the main building of this university. Actually, the other three murals we will see in this building were created for one of the most famous artists in Mexico in the 20th century. David Alfaro Siqueiros, along with Diego Rivera and José Clemente Orozco, established the Mexican muralist movement. The name of this mural is The People to the University, the University to the People, for a national neo-humanism culture of universal depth. This mural was created with a special technique called skull painting. 
is mixed between painting and sculpture and was created with an iron structure covered with concrete and decorated with glass of different colors. The oxidation of the iron structure caused the come off of glass and that's the reason why it's so damaged and for that now it's in the restoration process. On the mural we can see five young people who carry instruments alluding to their activities as students like the architectonic model, the pencil, the draftman compass and the book. These students are going east to the west, this because in the east is the university and in the west this Insurgentes Avenue, one of most important avenues in Mexico City. So the avenue represents the path they will follow to go out and serve the people. This clear in the blue student because with his arm is pointing to the university and with the other arm is pointing to Insurgentes Avenue. Next to the student, we can see many people with flags representing the students who demonstrated in the streets. This because the author of mural believed that the students have to be present in a political and social problem of the country. On the east face of the main building, we can see this mural, which was created just like the other by David Alfaro Siqueiros. This mural was created with a vinyl paint, direct on the wall. The name of this mural is the new university symbol or the new university emblem. Basically, it's based on the coat of arm of the university, but with abstract design, with diagonal lines and geometric figures. On the north side is this mural, created for Cicadus too. This mural has two techniques, with vinyl paint on the wall and a school painting in the 3D hand. These two hands symbolize the effort of people in the history to have access to education. The 3D hand is pointing to an open book with some dates, which are important to the author in the Mexico history. In 1520, the army of Hernán Cortés was defeated for the Aztecs, was the most important Aztec victory against the Spanish people, and it's called La Noche Triste, the Sad Night. In 1810, Mexico's independence. In 1857, the first liberal constitution in Mexico. In 1910, Mexico's revolution, and in the last one, it's at 1,902 question marks. This because the author thought in some year of 20th century, something important will happen in Mexico. Now, we are in the most symbolic building in this camp, the library. This is an icon of this university before the war. It's a building made art. Was constructed with blind walls. This means that it doesn't have windows. This is because the light of sun damaged the books. Only the stairs have a small windows. This library has more than half a million books. Juan O'Gorman, one of the architects of this building, besides being an architect, was a great artist. And this was the reason why he proposed to cover the walls with a gray mural, which he would design. This mural has 4,000 square meters. Juan O'Gorman wanted the color of this world to last despite the inclement weather, and he solved it with an extraordinary idea. Made the mural with the stone of different natural colors, and forget the stones with the color he wanted, he started to travel around the country for searching. But also, there is a legend about this. O'Gorman made a call to the primary school of the mining estates, where he asked the children to collect the stone of different colors, and it is said that the sacks arrived with the stone collected by the children coming from different states at Guerrero, Hidalgo, Zacatecas and Guanajuato. There is a color that is seen in the mural that is not the stone, since O'Gorman did not get the tone he wanted. Can you guess which color it is? Each side of the library has a mural and its own theme. Let's see them. The first one we will see is in the east side, titled The Contemporary War, where O'Gorman creates a central axis, where we see an atom, maximum symbol on those days of the scientific development, and above there is an allegory of Cautem, the last Aztec emperor, which has in the center a white dog representing the peaks. Of the left side, the industrial Mexico, the Mexico in process of development, where we can see factories, workers, and machinery. In the upper part, there is a moon, and above, there is a red star representing the socialism, 
on the right side in opposition to the left represent the traditional Mexico, the peasant Mexico, where we can see two Emiliano Zapata, who was a military leader, who fought in the Mexican Revolution, and he had a famous model, which we can read next to him, land and freedom. About him, a couple wearing typical costumes, about them, huts represent the humble way of living of many Mexicans, and in the highest part, a sun, and over it, a book, that the poses with the moon and the socialism star. Now, let's look the west face, which is titled the University and the Coral Mexico, where again, we see a central axis, which divides the mural into two sections. In this central axis, is the coat of arms of the university in the foreground. The left side of the mural speaks of traditional aspects of Mexico, the proletarian Mexico, represented by professors and students who honor their pre-Hispanic roots. And on the right side is about modern university, where knowledge, science and sports converge for human development. Now, we go to the north wall, one of the two largest walls in this library, where we can see this great mural, which is called the pre-Hispanic past where we will find a lot of Aztec symbolism. This mural is divided with three axes, one vertical as in the previous, and two horizontal, this by means of a current of water that symbolized the old channel that had the capital of Aztecs, Tenochtitlan, which was built on a lake. This mural speaks of the luminous and positive points of the pre-Hispanic world, this on the left side, and the obscure and negative points of this worldview, this on the right side. In the upper left side, we can see a sun and surrounding its Quetzalcoatl, a main god of Aztecs. Below is Tlaloc, the god of rain. Next to him, the supreme god of the Aztecs, the sun god, the god of the world, which he opposed. Below this section is Tlazolteatl, godless of sexuality, of carnal love, who represent the new life. Next to her, inside a temple, we can see the god of wind, Ehecatl, and in the last section, we can see the representation of a great ceremony with a musician and dancers. Now, we go to the right side, to the dark world, where in the upper right, we can see the opposite of the sun, the moon, again surrounded by Quetzalcoatl. Underneath is Chalchihuitl, godless of water that is in the land. Next to her is Tezcatlipoca, God that proclaimed the darkness and discord. In the next quadrant is a dwarf figure, Quetzalcoatl and Mictlancatecutl, Lord of the Land of the Dead. And below, in the last quadrant, we can see scenes of Aztec warriors. And on the central axis joining the two worlds is the god of the rain, Tlaloc, and below him, the representation of the myth of the foundation of Mexico, the eagle standing on a cactus devouring a snake. That's the reason why in the Mexican flag is this symbol. But now, we go to the South Wall. The title of this mural is a colonial path, where once again Ogorman divides the mural with a central axis, this to continue with his game of oppositions. In the right side, the colonial times and conquest by means of fate, and on the left side, the war between the Indians and the Spaniards, as well as the conquest by means of the sword. Let's begin with the two big blue circles which are two different views of the universe. This according to two great astronomers of antiquity. Follow me with his theory where it indicates that the earth is the center of the universe and everything resolves around this. And in the other side, the theory of Copernicus where he mentioned that the herd is that resolved around the sun. Now, let's go to the corners, where you can see on the left side a sun, and in the right side the sun but being eclipsed by the moon. On the right side, next to the sun, you can see angels, representing the Catholic religion. And in the right side are demons, are seen that is how the Catholic Church saw the pagan beliefs of the pre-Hispanic people. Below this, on the left side, we can see the new religion established in peace, and on the right side is seen as the religion was established with war, death and imposition. Below the circle of follow me theory, one sees a falling down eagle, representing Quauhtémoc, the last emperor of Aztecs, 
before the conquest of the Spaniard. In fact, literally, because Cuauhtémoc means eagle that descends, in language of Aztecs, Nahuatl. And in the other side, you can see the map of Tenochtitlan before the arrival of the Spaniard. And in the axis that separate the divisions, we can see on the top the cut of arms of the house of Falburgo, that was the house that reigned in Spain at the moment of the conquest. On each side of the coat of arms are two hands, one with a crucifix and the other with a sword, representing the spiritual conquest and the conquest with war. Below you can see two columns, one of them says Roof and the other says Ultra. Those columns, according to the Greek mythology, placed them Hercules in the stair of Gibraltar to indicate the end of the war and the words plus and ultra come from a phrase in Latin, non terrae plus ultra, which means there is no land beyond. Below is a Greek temple with Masonic symbols, and in the lower part, the union of two cultures, of two worlds, in the far ground, a Catholic cathedral, and in the background, a pre-Hispanic pyramid. And in the highest part, there is the elevator cube, where we can see an open group, symbolizing knowledge, which represents this library which is guarded by two Mexican warriors. And to finish with the library, I show you something impressive because it's hiding from our eyes. I love it when I knew it. It's the fact that if you enter for this side of the library, you are really being swore by Tlaloc, rain god of the Aztecs. This, because a woman brilliantly simulates the face of Tlaloc. First the eyes, then the nose, and then his mustache and fangs, really magnificent. But before we finish, we have to go to the Olympic Stadium. It's a beautiful building because it uses architecture, sports and arts. It was the first building in this campus that was inaugurated. In the same way, it was the first media stadium in the world. This means that it was the first that was designed with goods for media. Also, it's part of the era declared World Heritage Site. It was inaugurated on November 20 of 1952 by the President of Mexico in those years, was created for play football, very popular sport in those times in Mexico, but today is played soccer too. In addition, this stadium witnessed the most important sport events in the world, such as the 1968 Olympics and the 1986 World Cup and Pan American Games in 1955 and 1975. Architecturally speaking, it's interesting for the constructive process because it used a big hole that had the ground in those days. Reason why the stadium was constructed downwards, in the hole is the field, and from there left the construction of the grandstand. And thanks to this great design, you can see from inside what is outside, like trees, buildings, and mountains, making you feel outside and inside the stadium at the same time. Actually, the American architect Frank Lloyd Wright named this stadium the most important building in the modern America. It's a beautiful, historical and emblematic stadium, but that is not all. One of the best artists in the history of Mexico, Diego Rivera, created this beautiful mural, which by the way, in the original project, was expected that Rivera cover all the facade of the stadium, but for the time and money, the decision was made to only create this piece. In the lower part of the mural, we see the feather serpent Quetzalcoatl, which carries in its plumage a great symbol of Mexico, the corn. At the end, we see two athletes carrying the Olympic fire to light the Olympic flame. Behind is the bicephala beard of coat of arms of the university, and in the middle, a family where the main actor is a child carrying a white dove, which represents peace. Rivera's message is very clear the union of sport, culture and society to promote the peace. Well, my dear people, it's time to say goodbye. It was a pleasure to be with you and let me show you this beautiful campus. It's a pride for the Mexican, this university and everything it represents. But today is not only a heritage of a Mexican, today is a heritage of the humanity. If you come to Mexico City, don't forget to visit this beautiful place. If you have any doubts or anything to say, please write me in the comment section, and don't forget that we will upload more videos in English for continued discovering Mexico together. Thanks a lot, muchas gracias.